back to some glory after their disaster year last year. So we just took you through some rumors and headlines. Now let's get into a couple of players this offseason that I could see getting cut. And we're going to start with Kenny Britt, the Patriots wide receiver, who was signed in the middle of last year to a pretty surprising contract. They gave him a two-year deal, and he has a $400,000 roster bonus coming into camp this year. I don't understand why they gave him that much money, but look, if he isn't one of their top five wide receivers going to the season, why would you keep him and pay him that much money? I really don't see the need in Kenny Britt as of right now. I think Jordan Matthews brings you a good amount of size on the outside. Cordero Patterson can give you that athleticism that Kenny Britt has. And also, I don't really think that Kenny Britt is all that good of a wide receiver. I think his hands are crap. I don't think he's that fast, and I don't think he's an outrageous athlete anymore. So the Patriots have a lot of better options at wide receiver. So for now, I think that Kenny Britt is very much on the bubble. If he doesn't perform in preseason, I think he's going to be given the boot. Let's get to our second player, and that's Cyrus Jones, who, look, this breaks my heart. I've watched him play so often in high school. He went to my rival high school, and I watched him roast the McDonough Eagles multiple times. He was constantly the most athletic guy on the field. He is electric with the ball in his hands. But the problem is, is that as a pure cornerback, he's been a disaster in the NFL. He was terrible in his rookie season. He was okay in preseason before he got injured, but then he obviously missed this entire season with that knee injury. He was the Patriots' second-round pick back in 2016, but I just cannot see Cyrus Jones making the team if he can't beat out the likes of Jonathan Jones and Duke Dawson and Keon Crossan to get onto the team. That's just a little bit too much money for Cyrus Jones. I'm the host of Patriot Sport, Harris Rubenstein. You can follow me on Twitter, at Sportsdean, for all your Patriots news and updates. As well, if you've been seeing this on Twitter so far, the Patriots have put out a tweet saying, to give us your top Patriots at every single position. We'll get to those a little bit later. You can also see it on my Twitter account after the show. Let's get to our next guy who could be cut. It's a Landon Roberts. And this is someone who I've been banging the table to get out of the starting lineup for two years now because he has been a disaster. Look, the dude can tackle, but besides that, he can do absolutely nothing else. He can't cover. He can't blitz. He literally can't do anything else except tackle the dude that is directly in front of him. And sometimes he has issues even doing that. He was bad all season long after he had to replace Dante Hightower. He was terrible in the Super Bowl, one of the reasons that they ended up losing. And if he falls behind the guys that they drafted a linebacker, I could see him just getting straight cut. So obviously you have Hightower at one and then Kyle Van Noy as your two starting linebackers coming out of camp this year. Marquise Flowers they're bringing back who, by the way, Cassius Mars, Marquise Flowers has talked about multiple times how he's loved his time with the New England Patriots and they acquired both of you around the same time. So don't really want to hear it anymore. Alanda Roberts there at number four. But then you've, they've drafted Christian Sam and Juwan Bentley this past year. So if Alanda Roberts falls behind those guys and ends up as the number six linebacker, I just don't see them keeping him, especially with the struggles that he's had at the NFL level so far. All right, let's get to our next guy. And you're very familiar with this name and me talking about him needing to be cut. It's Dwayne Allen. Look, he's a great blocker. But what if I told you that as of this second, Dwayne Allen is the seventh highest paid player on the Patriots roster? I don't even know that that's possible. He caught 10 balls for 86 yards last year and is the seventh highest paid player on the roster. Get this dude out of here. Make him take a pay cut. This is a disaster. And the best part of this, the Patriots have an out in his contract for zero dollars in dead money if he gets cut. So, look, if they cut Dwayne Allen, I don't think there's going to be any sadness in Patriots Nation. He was a pretty big bust of a trade last year despite his blocking ability. But let me know in the comments section who you guys think the Patriots should cut this preseason. A lot of different options, a lot of camp battles all over the place, and a lot of weirdly expensive contracts that the Patriots can definitely get rid of going into this season. All right, let's get to our next guy, and that's Danny Shelton. Now, this might be a surprise for a lot of you. I've talked up this trade. I thought it was a really good trade, but after the Patriots declined his fifth-year option, I also think he could get cut if he falls as the 50 tackle on the depth chart. We have Vince Valentine coming back this year. He was really good in his rookie season, and then obviously didn't play last year due to a assortment of injuries. But look, if Danny Shelton got traded away by the Browns, who drafted him in the first round, that has to mean that there's something going on here. He definitely hasn't performed statistically to the level that you would expect someone of Danny Shelton's talent to do. So if he doesn't end up making an impact like they need him to, he could end up getting cut. Look, I think he's going to fall behind Vince Valentine on the defensive tackle depth chart. Valentine's looked great in camp so far since he's come back. 
And also, they have this guy from Georgia named John Atkins who can do the exact same thing that Danny Shelton does, just sit in the middle of the defense, take up a blocker or two, and help in the run game. And he's going to be way cheaper doing it. So Danny Shelton has to prove that he can be a possible starting caliber player on this defense in order for him to make the team. I still think he will, but I think he could end up getting cut if he doesn't perform. Let's get to my five players. A little summary here. We got Kenny Britt, Landon Roberts, Cyrus Jones, Dwayne Allen, and Danny Shelton. So before we head out, I'm going to take you through my top Patriots of all time at every single position. These are going to look a little bit on the younger side because obviously I'm on the little bit of a younger side. So these players are definitely the ones that I grew up watching and fall in love with during my time watching the Patriots. So a quarterback, it's obviously Tom Brady. Now I almost put Drew Bledsoe on there because growing up as a kid, I had a mural of Drew Bledsoe on my wall. I love Drew Bledsoe. I thought he was the best player in the NFL until he got replaced. So I had to put Tom Brady there. It's, it's just been too long of me watching him just wipe away people in the AFC. At running back, it's Corey Dillon. I love Corey Dillon. I love that kind of running back, just running over people. Touchdowns, he had a great year with the Patriots in 2004. Obviously a wide receiver, it's, it's Randy Moss. I don't really know who else you could choose out of this generation. I tight end is Rob Gronkowski, but OG Rob Gronkowski. Not after five years of injury, Rob Gronkowski. I'm saying first three years in the NFL when he's literally shoving people out of the club and stiff arming three people on the way to the end zone. That was a lot of fun. And then my top offensive lineman was Logan Mankins. That dude played through an entire Super Bowl run with a torn ACL. He was one of the best offensive linemen I've ever seen. Maybe the best run-blocking offensive lineman that I ever watched. Logan Mankins in his prime was an absolute bulldozer and a really, really fun player to watch. Let's get to the defensive side of the ball. And obviously the defensive line, it has to be Vince Wilford for me. It's just one of the best players I think the Patriots have ever had in terms of a personality and an on-field player, the leader of the defense for most of my life. It was obviously very sad for me when they ended up moving on from him, but I will always have a special place in my heart with Vince Wilfork. At linebacker, it's Teddy Bruschi. He helped get me into football. My first jersey was actually a Teddy Bruschi jersey, so I had to put him in there. At cornerback, this might be a surprise. I have Asante Samuel. I have never seen a cornerback with as good of ball skills as Asante Samuel. That dude could catch anything you ever threw in his general direction except for the one pass that he had to catch against the New York Giants in the Super Bowl, but I'm just going to forget about that one and keep Asante Samuel as one of my favorite quarters of all time. At safety, it's Devin McCourty. I talked about him. I still think he's one of the five best safeties in all of football. He's been amazing ever since they moved him there. And at special teams, it's Matthew Slater for me. I'm sorry, Adam Venetari and Steven Goskowski. You will never have a better place in my heart than what Matthew Slater has done on this team. But I want to know from you guys in the comments section, who is your favorite Patriot of all time let me know it can literally be anyone it could be some random offensive lineman from five years ago who isn't even with the team it could be dan Connolly just because he had that amazing kick return a couple of years ago but let me know who your favorite patriot is in the comment section but that's gonna do it for me today remember to follow me on twitter at sports theme for all your patriots news and updates and remember to like new england patriots by chat sports so you can get an alert whenever we go live we just hit twenty thousand likes let's get to twenty five thousand. but that's gonna do it for me today we'll see you